And this is Peter. Right. And we're here to talk and find out. Now, right away, I just want to say something that I, I love your album. I love the new album. And also, when I saw your last show, which was almost about a year ago, I was so blown away. And I was standing there watching the show, and I closed my eyes, and all I saw was colors. I think probably something to do with the heat. <laughs> it was the hottest show I think I've ever done. It, was, it must have been 120 degrees on stage. But yeah. I find that your music is more like art works rather than just little ditties. They're, they're colorful. Well, thank you. I, you know, art is, is almost a dirty word in rock and roll, and, and I, I have trouble approaching it, but I think we probably do put a bit more thought into it than, uh, than say, Motley Crue. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of visually oriented, so I, I see things too. You, you went to art school and, and yeah, working Yeah, I'm a token art student. Token art student. Every band's got to have one. Well, if you, aside from writing music, if you do music all the time, do you have some other creative outlet that you get away from doing Peter and I mud wrestle a lot. <laughs> That's <laughs> how we solve our problems. Man? The tag team mud wrestle. No, we don't do it with girls, we do it with each other. It's much more fun. <laughs> Who's yeah. your favorite writer? Peter. Well, that's very <laughs> nice. We'll keep it all nice in the family together. I like Flannery O'Connor. You like what? Flannery O'Connor. She's a southern uh, novel, short story writer. She wrote um, Good Man is Hard to Find. Everyone reads that in high school in America. I don't know. We don't have to read that here. We have to read like Margaret Wallace Atwood. Blood. What's that? Nothing. Okay. Not, it's, it's, it's another book of hers. Okay. And is that also your favorite writer? No, I'm reading Lawrence Durrell right now. I guess so, so. He's probably my favorite for today. Do you get a lot of your influence from your lyrics from books, or where did? We steal a lot. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I, I'm highly original. <laughs> but nobody can tell because no one can understand. So don't worry. When you're, you're Actually, we, we've written a new song and we stole it directly from a, a book that both of us read that we liked a lot. And yes. So, called it. Should we say what it is? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> no plotting, come on. It's called The Wasp, Wasp Factory, Factory by Ian Banks. It's a really great book. So we thought we had to take our eyes. I was blinded for a second there. Yeah. Okay, now, um, I understand that you don't really like to, which I can understand, talk about what your lyrics mean and everything like that, because that gets, you know, that like, people listen to it and that. But when you're dealing with video, which is can be sort of a linear medium, you know, taking the words and making pictures, how do you deal with that? We throw all those rules right out the window. Michael does most of the storyboards and uh, the directing from kind of an amateur's view viewpoint. And I would say that our, our videos are rather than being real linear, kind of surrealistic and uh, evocative. So as opposed to, to just plotting the story of the song, um, they're more just like little addendums that don't really have to even go with the song. Yeah. And Can't Get There From Here, I find, is really much like that. It's just running around back Real home. Real silly, yeah. Is it back home? Yeah. It's, it's in Athens. It's in Athens. Yeah. The last two drive-in theaters that both closed down in the last year, so. Right. Well, let's take a look at that right now. And, um, music. Guys, you have your new album, uh, Fables of the Reconstruction, was produced by Joe Boyd, which is different. It's the first time you've worked with him. Now, why did you choose him? He was tall. <laughs> what is That's you? not right. You're we just like his stuff. We've liked, I've liked all the work that he's done. And uh, I'm probably more of a music fan than anyone else in the band. And had really respected his work with Richard Thompson and Nick Drake. Nick Drake probably made the perfect record of all time. Which one? Um, Brighter Later. Um, the incredible string band just because his stuff was so weird. And we figured he had to be an interesting character to work with all these, you know, virtual eccentrics. When you went into the studio, did you already know what you wanted? Because I know that he's sort of like a folk producer. Did you... You seem to have gone more folk, but did you already have that intention, or did he have we a lot We all kind of have ideas about what we want to do, and we talk about it before we meet with the producer, and then it always changes a little bit in the studio, but everything pretty much is us working, and the producer is like a tool, you know, like a hammer that we put the nail on the board with. You really stay in control of all the art artistic ends of, of your business, is that? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you know, the do-it-yourself thing. I, I, I thought a while back that uh, we could take that and turn it into make others do it your way, but then the others never seem to really be able to connect with what you really want, so we went back to do it yourself, and things are better. Do you like working in a studio better or going out playing live? I like them both for different reasons. I wouldn't, I don't know what I'd pick if I had to drop one, you know. Um, the studio is really exciting because you discover new things about songs and, and all of a sudden you get this burst of inspiration to finish a song in a way that you never expected. Um, but live is just fun. I mean, it's just, it's an out and out, you know, pleasure. Do you meet lots of interesting people along the way? We meet lots of people, period. Yeah. Some are interesting, some not. Do you have any weird, ever have any, like, really weird experiences when you're on tour? 
Oh, you're smiling. <laughs> never, right? You know, it's, never. We don't have the kind of weird experiences that most rock bands have. We get, we have the, uh, we Why? have just, because we're not, um, I don't know, I mean, we don't dress up or act like most you know, real rock and roll stars. We don't get that kind of hysteria that, say, you know, Duran Duran gets or something like that. Our weird experiences are more, we like to go to strange little towns and just visit, you know, and so our weird experiences are visiting, like, Nevada, go to some really weird little town and go shopping and meet the local 80-year-old men who, like, you know, carve wooden Indians by hand. I water skied last week. That's a weird <laughs> that was, experience. That was completely That's weird great. for me. Um, you have a, a friend, uh, his name is Harold Finster. Howard, yeah. Howard Finster. And he's an artist, and he did the cover of your latest album. He did the cover of Reckoning. Of Reckoning. And the new Talking Heads album. New, yes. Now, he seems like a really interesting guy. Can you tell me a bit about him? He is. Um, he was a bicycle repairman, and uh, in 1976, he accidentally got some pain on the tip of his finger. And uh, he looked at it, and it was a face that told him that he should paint sacred art. So he's been painting sacred art ever since then. And I don't think uh, the cover of Reckoning was very sacred, but, you know, it was how, good. How did you get meet up with him? He came to Athens and uh, exhibited some of his work years and years ago, and I, I met him then, and uh, he's a real interesting character. Yeah, because there's an article kind of in, in Spin magazine. Mm -hmm. He's a really great person. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much an unbeliever, but he'd make me believe, you know. I mean, we'll sit and talk about religion and stuff, and... And he just doesn't care if you believe or not. He's just a nice, a truly nice guy. I like him a lot. Which is that, is that sort of your attitude? You don't care if people like what you're doing, you're just going to keep on doing it? Yeah. I, mean, that, I think that's a, about the only attitude you can really take and still be honest with yourself. It's yeah. nice to be liked. I mean, you know, <clears throat> makes things pleasant. But certainly the only people that we really want to please are each other, the four of us. Well, that's great. And I wish you the very, very best. We should... Oh! Oh! This is the gift. This is the official Much Music gift, which I'm pleased to give you. Thank Here you, you go. Much, much Music t-shirts. Wear them well on your tour through all the weird cities that you're going to hit. <laughs> and uh, we should leave off with, what do you say, South Central Rain? Sure. 